So why is there so many problems with diet culture? So glad you asked. I'll answer that for you. Diet culture promotes disordered eating or eating disorders. Fat activism promotes an always benching lifestyle. Was that a fair thing to say? Well, it was about as fair as what she just said. Just a reminder, when she says diet culture, she literally means anything that involves trying to eat healthy. So what is diet culture? Diet culture is the culture of dieting with intention weight loss. She isn't just attacking things everyone agrees are bad, like diet teas or juice cleanses. Diet culture promotes disordered eating or eating disorders. This might cause people to overeat or undereat, but then go out and exercise a lot. This can result in binge eating disorder. Not following the logic. Exercise gives you binge eating disorder? In what world? And none of these activities really enhance your health. All of these things are completely harmful. Even eating healthy food and exercising? Someone should have told her as a child, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Diet culture also promotes an ideal beauty standard, which is unattainable by like majority of people because they're not realistic. And most of these people that have the ideal body shape don't get it from exercising and clean eating and consuming only water. They're getting it from surgeries. Like, hello, like every Instagram baddie has like a BBL. They BBL stands for Brazilian butt lift. That's where they take fat from other parts of your body and put it into your butt. I didn't realize that was part of the so-called ideal body. I'm not going to start dragging on specific people, but I think a lot of people actually don't consider that an ideal appearance. Strange how she includes Instagram models in her definition of diet culture. How does she not see that those people have little to nothing to do with a culture of eating vegetables and getting at least some exercise every day? One is the pursuit of health. The other is the pursuit of looks. By the way, you might notice that Angelica is wearing makeup and has her hair done in a fancy way. So she obviously cares about looks at some level. So it seems a bit hypocritical to judge others for focusing on their looks in a different way. Or does she really just have a problem with toxic appearance culture? In the same way that most people have a problem with toxic diet culture? Or is this argument too subtle for her? All this comes down to is promoting one body type and humans don't come in one body type. We come in so many different shapes and sizes. True, but many of those shapes and sizes are impossible without the epidemic of trashy convenience food. Diet culture also makes us think that what we eat and our size determines who we are. But that definitely is not the case. We are more than what we eat and what we look like. And to be honest, it wastes a lot of our time, energy, and money. We could be using all these resources on way better things. Like resources? Seriously? Obese people are a huge drag on the medical care system. If there were less obese people, much of the resources of that system would be freed up. Like, think about all the money you've spent on dieting. Imagine if you just put that in a nice savings account. I know I'd be saving a few more thousand dollars. Or imagine you just ate healthy and exercised, and because of that you probably had reduced medical bills and saved money. You could spend that money elsewhere. If I put all the energy I did into dieting into my career, I might be a little further. See how all these things are stealing away from our better self? Dieting shouldn't be very time-consuming, and exercise should help you to have more energy and live longer, thus actually saving you time in the long run. And diet culture lies to us. Diet culture is a $60 billion industry. In fact, And the beauty industry is an almost $500 billion industry. Yet she doesn't talk about that. Strange. Started out. And diet culture stigmatizes a lot of marginalized bodies, including black, ethnic minorities, gay, are you implying that everyone who isn't Caucasian is naturally fatter than Caucasians? That's pretty racist. And all of this reduces our self-worth down to our appearance. And I know I've struggled with that myself because I feel judged by my outer being. I feel like I need to have makeup on and my hair done and wear flattering clothes to be perceived as something more. Makeup isn't diet culture. Fancy hair isn't diet culture. Diet culture is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a catch-all term for everything that is wrong with the world. Sorry, it just isn't. That doesn't really matter. It's truly about what's in the inside that matters. If she really felt that and wasn't just paying lip service to it, she would do the video au naturel. 
A lot of these things can be seen as classist because a lot of low income people are living in these urban areas with food deserts. And food deserts are a place that don't have a grocery store within a mile of them. So a lot of these people are living off of fast food and convenience stores. So all this food is really processed and they're just eating to survive. They are food deserts a problem? Yes. Are they the main source of the obesity epidemic? No. Her mentioning them feels rather like she's using them as a prop than something she actually cares about. I don't hear her mentioning solutions, just using it as an excuse as to why dieting is bad. It shouldn't be asked of people to obtain a certain body image or status of health because, first of all, we live in America, and I should say I live in America, and we don't even have United Healthcare. Pretty sure she means universal health care. United Healthcare seems to be an insurance company. I'm guessing she's a member? So I feel like no one should expect anyone to be healthy because most of the people can't even afford or have ha access to a doctor, let alone nutritious food that they need to survive. That argues for the exact opposite point. Because healthcare is harder to get, you should focus on making yourself as healthy as possible so you don't get some impossible to pay medical bill. The scariest thing about diet culture is that it's a shapeshifter. So much has changed over the years, and it tends to reinvent itself. Back in like the 60s or 70s, even before then, people would smoke cigarettes because it was an appetite suppressant. And most of the people nowadays are like, ew, what the fuck, don't smoke, it's gross. Cigarettes, an industry that did its best to hide the scientific data about how its products were unhealthy. Now, tell me again about how there are no unhealthy foods. But nowadays, we're more focused on Weight Watchers and other- Yes, evil Weight Watchers. A plan designed to trick you into eating more fruit and veg. Totally equivalent to Philip Morris. And other ways that we can slim down ourselves, like pure eating, juice cleanses, keto diet, or saying goodbye to gluten, dairy, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates? Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. My mistake. Carbohydrates. That's clearly not a word she's saying for the first time in her life. We're still obsessing over the same thing, which is thinness and obsession with eating in our appearance. No she is again criticizing people trying to look good while continuing to wear makeup. My irony meter is hitting 11, guys. I might need to get a new dial so it can go all the way to 12. No matter how you look at diet culture, it seems like there's always this certain view of demonization or scaremongering around food. Like we need to have certain eating behaviors to pursue a certain physical appearance. So what can we do now? Well, I already think you're in a great place because we've broken down what diet culture is. Have we? I think she included everything in diet culture. If her video were longer, then I'm sure she would have blamed Germany in the 1930s on diet culture too. It's great that you've watched this video and we're getting education. Education? But there's still more things you can do to kind of break down diet culture in your life. In no means, I am not the diet culture queen or expert in anything. So I do recommend continuing to educate yourself. I love Christy Harrison so much. She wrote the book Anti-Diet and runs the podcast called Food Psych. Ugh, Christy Harrison. This calls for a hamster break. After this point in the video, she just advertises other HAES people. But I think we learned today the importance of arguing about specific things and not having too big a target. Or at least we learned the correct pronunciation of... Carbohydrates. Thank you to everyone who helps support me to make these videos, and to everybody who comes and watches. A special thanks goes out to Hannah McNally, Carl Williams, and Sarah Ahern for their generous support. That's the end of the video. If you liked it, consider clicking like and subscribe. If you really liked it, consider becoming a member. As always, there should be more Fat Logic videos every other Monday, and on the weekends I'll be looking at videos made by Fat Logicians.